Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome an accomplished professional from Gurgaon, India, Kajal Mahajan. Kajal, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Ashutosh. Thanks uh, for having me. Thank you. Kajal is the founder and head coach of The Positive Practice. So Kajal, before we talk about functional nutrition and wellness, tell me about your journey and what motivated you to become a functional nutrition and wellness coach. Right. So Ashutosh, you know, I was always very interested in the way that we lead our lives and how that culminates into overall and long-term health. Mm. Uh, that resulted in my interest in biology. And as Indian schooling would have it, that's a natural progression into studying medicine. Mm -hmm. So I went on to study uh, medicine at a medical college and halfway through my journey, I realized that while my interest is in the physiology of the body in terms of how it works, uh, oftentimes we meet our patients too late in the game where surgery or medication becomes the only answer. Mm. And even as a young 19 year old, I felt that there's a better way. Mm. Uh, so luckily, I was able to find, uh, you know, a path that helped me to study my passion, which was health psychology, exercise science and nutrition. Mm. And then I went on to do my master's in clinical nutrition. Mm. Uh, from then on, I did my uh, functional nutrition certification in 2020, all through COVID, which was a brilliant mm. time to do it. Uh, and then I've been using those principles in my practice ever since. Fascinating, fascinating. And Kajal, for my viewers and listeners, tell me, how do you define functional nutrition and how does it differ from traditional dietetics? Right. So, you know, functional nutrition and functional medicine have really trended in the last, I would say, four to five years, uh, mainly because of the ideology on which the science sits. And that is that a symptom occurring in any organ system in the body mm -hmm. has effects on the other organ system, something that you know, modern medicine doesn't always look into. Mm. Uh, oftentimes, we only, uh, you know, cure the sy symptomatology without going to the root cause and working upstream, which is why I'm very passionate about think functional nutrition and using its principles in our daily life. Uh, traditional dietetics has its own place. It helps uh, in the large scale operations of WHO and UNICEF, where they're trying to fight malnutrition in Africa and Asian countries and all sorts of sanitation issues and things like that, where, you know, dietetics is required on a mass, mass scale. And there's some requirement of uh, certain indices available, which are population averages. But when it comes to leading and uh, being able to figure out a life that works for each one of us as individuals, mm -hmm. it becomes important to go a bit deeper uh, and understanding how our particular psychology works and how we can, you know, better our health using mm -hmm. our specific uh, tools. Mm -hmm. Well said. And uh, my next question is, what are some of the most common nutritional myths that you encounter? And how do you address yeah. some of these? Right. So some of the most common ones, of course, are still uh, based on, you know, demonizing some nutrients and idolizing the others. So today fat has become a demon. Carbohydrates were the uh, demon in, in the 1990s and early 2000s. Um, you know, so those are some of the things that it becomes very important to, you know, steer clear or, I mean, drive up my clients away from that kind of psychology of eating. Mm -hmm. uh, then idealizing certain foods. So, you know, these days nutritional science and uh, research as well as just nutritional news has become very sensationalized. So every week we have a new flavor of the month, you know, at times it's kombucha or something. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, apple cider vinegar, probiotic. So, you know, being able to kind of educate the clients uh, is very important on what is specifically required and how it's not a cure-all for all the other sort of things that we can try and change in yeah. the lifestyle. You know, you're so right. I remember in, in 2006 when I launched GNC in India, uh, right. people would say, why do I need uh, an omega-3 because I eat fish or why do I need a vitamin C because I have nimupani? But great response. Right. So tell me now, Kajal, what are, what would you say or tell me a little bit about is food as a medicine? And mm. how do you integrate this into your practice? Right. So, you know, Ashutosh, um, what I've realized over time, uh, rather than the idyllic 24-year-old when I left my master's uh, course, mm. is that... Uh, 
practicality is very different from textbook. Yes. So while all of us would love to eat clean 100% of the time and avoid all kinds of disease all of the time, that's not actually practical at all. Life happens, we travel, we have social commitments, mm -hmm. and sometimes we just want to live and enjoy, right? So I think uh, as long as we live by the 80-20 principle, which is to say that 80% of the time we eat to nourish our bodies, nourish our minds, and support ourselves in reaching and meeting and maintaining our wellness goals, whether it's a, a, a certain amount amount of glucose control or weight or blood cholesterol or even just stress levels um, you know and 20% of the time we eat for enjoyment because food at the end of the day is also emotional cultural and enjoyment Correct. you know um, having said that I think there are certain components and we'll get into that talk and I definitely want to you know kind of focus on that as uh, mm -hmm. you know as our talk kind of uh, is ongoing uh, but there are certain nutrients which definitely work as medicine. And uh, we definitely want to try and get those nutrients as much as possible and hopefully at each and every meal of the day. Mm. And yet there are some key nutrients which seem to be missing for most of us in India. Right. What are some of these and how can people add these in their diets? Right. So, um, you know, we've all heard of vitamin D3 post-COVID-19 uh, and realized that it's so, so vital, not just for bone health, but pretty much works as a charm for every cell of the body. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just a vitamin. Science has proven that, that it's a hormone now. So vitamin D3 and vitamin B12. B12 is another one that human, uh, that Indians are quite deficient in as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so these are easily accessible via supplements as well. So when I see a blood test with over vitamin B12, vitamin D3 levels, there's no issue at all with supplementing with both of these nutrients. Mm -hmm. Some of the other ones which are harder to supplement with are iron um, and, uh, you know, fiber. So these are the two nutrients that I find in my clinical practice to be quite deficient in men and women, women more with iron, but fiber pretty much across the board. Mm -hmm. And now that we are seeing, you know, the rates of cancer going up, especially that of colorectal cancer and colon cancer. Um, you know, in the States, colonoscopy has become a complete norm every six months after the age of 40. And it just goes to show how human beings are not eating the way our alimentary canal was meant to be fed, uh, which is why, you know, and fiber is something that I don't like to supplement with because, of course, we can all have that. We all have that ease of goal at mm. lying around at home. Uh, but the idea is that when we eat, get it from fresh foods, we really allow our bodies from top to toe, including our teeth, including our hair, our skin, you know, our gut, of course, and our overall energy and mood to improve. So fiber is something I focus on a lot. Of course, it goes with everybody's individual gut health, what they can eat raw, what mm. they can't, and, uh, you know, kind of individualizing it. But yeah, that's one very important nutrient, mm. I think, today's well, day and age. What a great response. Thank you. You know, I've heard this so many times that, I'm out in the sun, therefore I don't have a deficiency of vitamin D. And then they go for a checkup. And that's the first thing right. the doctor tells them. Well said. My next Thank question you. for you, Kajal, is what is your philosophy on dieting versus making long-term lifestyle changes? Yeah, great question, Ashutosh. And so pertinent. Um, I think I go back to uh, the goal-setting session that I have with each client when we start the program. Because I really like to get into their why, you know, why do we want to look at their nutrition? Mm -hmm. um, for, for a lot of people, very honestly, it can be aesthetics, right? Um, and, and that's absolutely okay. Uh, but just to say that when we are looking at aesthetics, a lot of the times, you know, that goal doesn't deepen their why for them. Uh, and that then becomes a short term goal. So that goes into dieting mind frame a little bit. As opposed to wanting to live a wholesome life with, you know, being able to be fit and be uh, completely nourished in order to fulfill all of your responsibilities and duties. So I believe that there is a there is a slight mind, mindset shift that is required. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I think a lot of us require a bit of coaching, require a little bit of guidance through that. Yeah. Uh, you know, human beings can only see what they see with their two eyes. It's very right. difficult for you to imagine what's happening on the inside, which is mm -hmm. why a professional comes in. Uh, and, you know, I take that job very seriously in being able to counsel my clients into making them understand what the deeper why truly is for them. 
um i won't say it works 100% of the time but uh, but it definitely plants a seed you know mm-hmm. if nothing else mm-hmm. and so yeah i think long term lifestyle change is absolutely pertinent uh it's something that i take very seriously at the positive practice uh, we work together for a minimum of 12 weeks and um, you know the idea is to al- always keep it very interesting because at the end of the day you know we uh, we require that mental stimulation and uh, ability to keep putting in that effort so through the course of the program there's a lot of educative chapters actually that we discuss with each client which you know helps them kind of understand uh, why a longer term change is even required and makes them feel a bit more interested in the process right. as well right so which is why i feel long term is always you know that's that's the goal well said and uh, how critical is sleep when it comes to you know managing our health and how do you address right. uh, as a part of nutrition with your clients right right yeah very interesting question i think um, yeah i think sleep is one of those completely underrated nutrients honestly um you know sleep is very interesting because um i'm just going to go into the geeky science a little bit here mm-hmm. uh you know our bodies and minds work in two parallel nervous system situations one is the sympathetic nervous system which is essentially where you and i are at at this point mm-hmm. it helps us to think it helps us to do our tasks it helps us to wake up in the morning and you know carry on through the rest of the day mm. what it doesn't help us to do is to rest and to digest right and that is where the parasympathetic nervous system comes in mm. that goes into activation the parasympathetic nervous system only gets activated during sleep and during deep relaxation mm. so activities like meditation activities like music art you know those are the activities that uh we really need to kind of encourage ourselves to spend time in um and which is why stress these days is so out of control because the amount of time that we're focusing on these activities has gone down mm. so sleep works in two ways one is that it helps us to completely rejuvenate and repair from the previous day if we don't get enough sleep as you can imagine the wear and tear just keeps building up the inflammation keeps building up and then it leads into disease mm. um the second way that i find sleep really really impacting our eating psychology and habits is that it alters our insulin response mm-hmm. so when we are you know functioning on less than 6 hours of sleep in a day predominantly we'll notice that our insulin response is completely imbalanced mm. which is leading to a fact that our uh, you know our hunger and appetite is out of control mm-hmm. our blood is confused in terms of how to manage the blood glucose levels and cravings are are always at an all time high mm-hmm. uh, of course stress hormones are also in- completely increased when we don't get enough sleep and that again has an influence on blood glucose and insulin values mm-hmm. so the, this is the reason why sleep is very essential and we dedicate a whole chapter on that uh, there's a lot of you know sleep hygiene that we, we look into mm-hmm. and uh, especially with modern day and you know the way that our lifestyles are these days sleep is something that takes a hit for sure well said and what would you say is the relationship between physical activity and nutrition when it comes to your coaching yeah great question again so part of what i studied at college was exercise science i was an athlete like i said growing up and i believe that when you move your body well you want to take care of it mm-hmm. therefore you always eat well as well that is number one the other thing that i've always focused on is also self and body image mm-hmm. which when you move your body and when you're exercising automatically the way that you view your own self and your body is always heightened it's always with a higher sense of respect you know this leads to a huge change in i think eating psychology of my clients it helps them to make better choices it also puts them in a better mood and energy uh, level and both of these things really compound whatever changes they want to make to their eating schedule mm. um more than the calories because i you know while if it's an exercising client who's doing weight training and stuff of course the, the diet is completely you know uh, made to suit those needs right. even if they're into cardio it depends on what they're doing mm-hmm. but if you're a leisure exerciser i think the idea is rather than focusing too much on the calorie burn it's very essential that we focus more on the changes that it makes to our mental health and the way we view uh, food so that's what i think and we exactly. definitely talk a lot about that in our okay. like uh, you know in a few minutes back you spoke about colorectal cancer you also spoke about fiber so my question to you is what 
is the importance of gut health and how does it relate to overall wellness great question i love all your questions ashutosh they're all Thank so you. pertinent and exactly what people need to hear these days hmm. so you know gut health is something that it has uh, kind of garnered so much interest in the last 10 years 12 years something that ayurveda spoke about like you know since thousands of years that all disease begins and ends in the gut yeah. right um and so i truly truly believe that the gut microbiome uh, govern everything that happens in your body as well as your mind mm. these days we talk about the brain and gut axis there's also a brain and uh, sorry there's also pituitary gland and mm. gut axis your pituitary gland is where all of the you know um, all of the activator hormones are released mm. um, you know in the body which then leads to thyroid and cortisol and your sex hormones and everything re- releasing in optimum levels from your various glands so gut health for sure is extremely crucial uh, to overall well being and is also in turn governed by so many factors diet is one of them fiber plays a very big part of course depending on the kind of individual that i'm talking to soluble insoluble raw cooked mm. all you know differs right. uh, but apart from just diet there's also a lot to do with mental health uh, which is the reason why i call my practice a positive practice mm. is to put people in a positive mindset you know before we're making any change right. uh, today's stress levels really alter gut microbiome and so you know that's something that we lo- really look into because it's more than what you eat is what your gut microbiome eat mm. that really matter uh, that really define how your health is doing in the long run very well said the so, my next question is on mindfulness and you know the whole world is yeah. talking about mindfulness and how important it is in our lives right how does one incorporate mindfulness into mm. your nutrition coaching right very good question so you know mindfulness is nothing but awareness really isn't it so um the idea for me when i'm coaching any client is to really bring them in tune mm-hmm. uh with their own body needs so whether that's hunger energy or cravings um it be also start like i said the every program with their why so it, they become aware of their deeper reasons for wanting to make a change mm-hmm. uh the other thing also becomes you know in terms of their eating so mindful eating is a really really big concept that um, you know that became uh, even more uh, you know popular during covid because everyone was home and had all this time now to you know kind of figure out how and when they eating and mindful eating goes into basically slowing down your pace uh, of eating because that has a big impact on your gut health and then all also on your overall weight sometimes because people tend to eat too fast and then you know that kind of la- lands up in uh, right. you know weight gain so uh, mindfulness is a huge part of the program we we run the clients through a lot of questionnaires uh, that they kind of uh, you know cover up on their own and with our assistance as well mm. and helps them to bring closer and more aware of their own cues essentially mm. very interesting My next question is you know when you spoke about eating and the importance of eating how do you yeah. address the whole challenge of emotional eating or food related psychological issues with some right. of your clients right so you know ashutosh uh, this is such a great um, example of you know the spectrum uh, that exists when it comes to eating and the emotional aspect of that mm. uh, the thing with food is that at the end of the day it is a comforting factor in all of our lives right uh, one doesn't have to have a full blown eating disorder to know that we've reached out for a you know some ice cream or you know paratha or something that on a day that we've been feeling low mm. now the, the first step in deciding between someone that is an emotional eater uh, and someone with a full blown eating disorder uh, so it's very important to make that distinction because that distinction decides the prognosis like the course of action because if it is someone with a very serious like eating disorder and we're very clear about that then the help of a psychologist psychotherapy sometimes medication is very very crucial mm-hmm. so that is a diagnosis that needs to be made at the very early stages of consulting a client right uh, once it's clear that um, you know it's bordering more on emotional eating mm-hmm. uh, then there's a lot of other things that can be done in order to bring the client to a point where we're understanding how much they emotions are you know kind of eating into quite literally their uh, nutrition habits 
Um, you know, a lot of times that there are unmet needs, there's anxiety or stress, there could be a depression even. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had a few clients, Ashutosh, that mm -hmm. I have kind of started work with and mm -hmm. then turned more towards a psychologist. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there have been other clients as well who said, okay, you know, we tend to eat more on certain days. And over time, we've been able to reduce those episodes just by mindfully and with awareness approaching those that days and you know taking looking at it with a lens of curiosity and going back a step mm -hmm. uh, away from judgment and figuring out what is the sort of uh, trigger that creates that behavior pattern mm -hmm. and uh, you know working from that well said so time for two more questions for you my yes. next question is what role do you believe mental health plays mm. when it comes to overall nutritional wellness right so um, mental health, I believe, plays into every aspect of our lives mm -hmm. and our daily habits when it comes to our eating and our movement, our sleep, um, everything that we feed ourselves, whether mm -hmm. that's food or consumption or anything else, uh, is totally and completely affected by our mental health and vice versa. So to say that we'll always be mentally well and mentally stable and mentally, you know, fulfilled is again, you know, uh, a fairy tale uh, sort of existence. It doesn't happen in real life, which is why we've dedicated a whole chapter on the chapter of chill and joy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think we human beings tend to take life very seriously, and it takes a it takes a sort of um, you know a coach to just bring that uh, awareness to you know, to you when you are going through that and mm -hmm. re recognizing that each day of our lives is just that one day and that day is not going to come back. So it's essential that we, you know, very uh, consciously, we, you know, bring in the element of chill and joy into right. every single day. Mm -hmm. So while people say, let's meditate, let's speak to a therapist, you know, there's a big checklist of mm -hmm. uh, taking care of our mental health on a daily basis. And of course, all of that is very important, especially for someone who's identified that they have certain behavior patterns that they require professional help with a lot of times those patterns have been set over time which it had there been an initial you know intervention of looking at this element of joy until we wouldn't have reached there mm -hmm. so I think it's very important for us to look at life and balance mm -hmm. and uh, that's something that I always coach my clients on and uh, I think that's something that I practice as well. So it's very important to do that, I think. Fascinating. And Kajan, my last question to you. Um, what strategies would you recommend for maintaining a healthy lifestyle in a, busy, in a very, very busy schedule? And all of us seem to be grappling with this all the time. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Ashutosh, I think one of the main things is to be realistic. And, um, you know, to set yourself goals, which are challenging, but achievable, okay. you know, uh, both in a time manner, like in terms of how much time you're giving yourself, as well as how much effort is truly required from you, mm -hmm. uh, given that you're taking on your other responsibilities as well, you know, so um, I think that's number one, for someone that's working towards a certain goal like I've had professionals come up to me and entrepreneurs that were training for a certain marathon and they've never been runners mm -hmm. and suddenly they want to run a 10k you know so that's something that our uh, human mind doesn't comprehend that we can we don't have to do be all or nothing you know okay. there is a huge sort of space in the middle mm -hmm. and how to mindfully consciously work on that day to day you know in a realistic manner mm -hmm. so that's number one setting very realistic goals uh, is crucial to your self-confidence is crucial to progress um the second thing is to live by the 80 20 principle mm. like i said in the beginning of our chat yep. uh because 100 percent is absolutely impossible mm. you know uh it's it's something that uh, we all try to strive towards and when we fail we tend to get off the bandwagon and never get back on Mm -hmm. So it's very important to think of life as that 80-20 rule when it comes to eating healthily, working out, you know, giving yourself that um, ability to relax every day. Uh, there will be days that will be off balance, but then to get back the next, get back on your routine the next day is very, very crucial. Mm -hmm. When it comes to busy schedule, I think also planning makes a huge impact. 
So planning your week in advance, not just in terms of your meetings and your travel, but also in terms of how you're going to be fueling yourself as that week goes by. A lot of people are living, young people are living on their own. They need to food prep. Uh, and, you know, with all of our uh, Insta Martin, our Spiggies and Zomatos of the world, it's become so easy to do, um, you know, ordering in. And while that has its place and uh, it's, you know, it's part of kind of modern day life, it's also important to figure out what purpose that's really ser serving in our lives and be able to plan for events where we would much rather eat and nourish ourselves and be able to kind of be energetic to show up for the rest of the responsibilities and duties that we need to fulfill. Because our bodies are reservoirs and there's only so much that it can keep giving. It's very important to give back. Uh, that's a philosophy, I think, that I've always lived by myself. Uh, to treat yourself with respect and love mm -hmm. uh, and give back to it as much as we take from it, very if well. not more. <laughs> very, very well said. Thank and you. on that note, uh, Kajal, uh, and you, your amazing piece of advice that take small steps, take bite-sized milestones. Yes. Thank you so much for speaking to me about your own you, passion for wellness. Thank you for speaking to me at such length about functional nutrition. I think we covered a lot of ground on different aspects of nutrition. And I'm sure in a few months from now, I may reach out to you for another conversation based on feedback we may get from a lot of our viewers and listeners to go in depth into some particular subject. Absolutely. But thank you for speaking to me and good We'd luck. We'd love to do that. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure thank to you. chat with you. Thank you. Kasha. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.